I'm Dan Kleffler in New York, and as the financial markets are coming to a close on Wall Street for this Friday, January 16th, this is Story Stock. Goldman Sachs, although the highly regarded investment bank's quarterly results did top estimates, investors not too pleased. Why? Because net income slid 7% year over year, stemming from a downturn in Goldman's trading and investment banking division. So here to give us a little more into why the street is not exactly thrilled with Goldman's performances, I want to bring in Bloomberg's Michael Regan. Michael, thanks for stopping by today. Let's dig into the numbers. What happened this past quarter? Well, as you said, uh, net income down about 7% to $2.17 billion at earnings per share at $4.38, beat the street estimate by a few cents. But the stock is down today in what is otherwise an up market. And a lot of people are focusing on those trading revenues, which depending on you know how you slice and dice them, they were down either 20 or 30 percent to about $1.2 billion, which is the lowest since 2005 for Goldman Sachs. And that's really a bread and butter business for Goldman. So it's, you know, it's a disappointment for sure. So hindsight of being 2020 what it always is, then what's the plan going forward to kind of stem this loss? Well, it, trading revenue was something that Wood Blank Fine had really expected to uh, improve. So it is a disappointment. Really what they've been doing is focusing on costs. Those famous uh, Goldman bonuses mm. uh, that are so generous might not be quite as generous this year. They're paying about less than 37% of their revenue out in compensation which is the second lowest they, they've ever had. So, you know, to some extent, trading, you know, they're sort of a slave to the mood of the market. If, if their customers don't want to trade as much, um, you know, there's not a lot they can do. So they're kind of trying to focus on costs to keep the bottom line up. You know, a lot of people have been saying that the problem is, how do you put a value on a company? You know, how does then Goldman go about doing that? Right. The value, it's a common problem for all these banks. Their, their valuations have never recovered to where they were before the financial crisis. Goldman, for example, trades a little bit more than the value, than book value, mm. the value of its assets. Um, in 2007, it was trading for about triple the value of its assets. And uh, it's sort of a common problem across all the big banks. Obviously, the financial crisis is still fresh in people's minds. And the European debt crisis has really added to that. People are just a little skeptical about the banks uh, as far as about, you know, how much they're willing to pay for the stock and value the companies. And you know, really just skeptical that the value of their assets will stay where they are and, and not necessarily fluctuate uh, to the downside if something, you know, if more volatility comes into the market. So I know that there can also be kind of those variations. Sometimes you can have a good quarter. Sometimes you can have a bad quarter, so you can have a bad year. In fact, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to change your position in the market then. Right. But JP Morgan, or excuse me, Goldman rather, is it still the premier investment bank that everyone sort of holds it up to be? Oh, yeah, you know, it is. Um, obviously, Goldman's reputation took a pretty big hit after the financial crisis. You know, we've probably all read the, the famous Rolling Stone story where sure. they called the, the vampire squid. So from that perspective, uh, perspective, their reputation got a little bit more battered than the rest. Um, you know, valuation wise, you know, they still, uh, again, are not trading at a multiple that would suggest a lot of confidence in them. So it's, you know, it, banking in general has become a difficult uh, sector to, to value for investors for all those reasons. So it's, it's clear that the confidence hasn't quite returned to the levels that it was before the financial crisis. And we'll have to wait and see that now. I was going to play out. You know, the other things last I wanted to ask you about this is, you know, the 2016 election is coming up not that far from now. Mm -hmm. Clearly, as far as banking regulations and investment firms, I mean, that's going to be one of the issues that's going to be discussed as well. How does someone like a Goldman have to deal with something like that coming into these new elections? Oh, it's absolutely, absolutely a huge deal. I mean, the general thinking is that the Republican Congress is, will maybe go a little bit easier on the banks. They got a reprieve from some of the Dodd-Frank regulations that were uh, in the fourth quarter that were pushed back into the future. So that's, you know, allowing them to take their time to, to come into compliance with these regulations. Uh, but, you know, uh, fines and legal costs are the, the big story this year for banks. And there's a general thinking that, you know, maybe the worst is over from that perspective, but you never know. You know, you never know when another suit or, or fine is going to come out. So it's, it's something to watch for sure. we wait to see and wait for another quarter. All right, Michael Regan from Bloomberg. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Of course, you can keep up with the story in real time by downloading the ABC News app and starting the story for exclusive updates on the go. For now, you're watching Story Stock.